Okay. Uh, you know, today was, uh, you know, mimicking uh, for us a, a Wednesday. So, you know, we had, a, you know, a few different levels. Uh, certainly some team versus USC. Uh, you know, we had some good versus uh, good uh, two-minute work, which we do on Wednesdays. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, some, some things that you would normally do and articulate uh, for technical work, um, you know, to get your football team ready, um, you know, through camp. So, you know, a little bit of everything today. But, again, getting our guys starting to think about the, the mindset of, you know, we're preparing, but we're also kind of beginning to flip that switch towards, you know, game week preparation as well. So, um, you know, it was a good day. The guys worked really hard. I like where we're at in terms of um, our mindset and, and how we're preparing. Guys are starting to, you know, really put some consistent days together. Um, you know, like any time during camp, we get some guys with some ankles and foot injuries, nothing serious. Um, but it gives our other guys that are key backups an opportunity to go in there uh, and compete. And so we get a great look at uh, some of the other guys that are going to have to be called upon it at some time during the season to step in for. So good day overall and open it up to questions. Hey, Coach, I was wondering if you could maybe just share some more thoughts and information on the climatization process that you, you put your team through. And obviously everyone's going through it in the south, and it is feeling better out there. But there, is there a sense of once they make it through this, the games in some ways are easy? Yeah, easier? so, it, you know, we we use a lot of data in the off season. You know, I, quite frankly, we've, we've leaned on, uh, you know, the NFL data model relative to um, what has been produced from a safety and um, acclimatization model for injuries from the NFL. And having Katie O'Neill uh, as the chief medical officer for the SEC, we're, we're a lot, you know, we get a lot of data from, from her and, and the office there that, that really allows us to look carefully at where do the injuries take place, at what time during camp, and at what player load. So we're, we're able to put that together with um, you know, the, the acclimatization. We're also part of an NFL study right now uh, on uh, weight loss relative to, um, you know, fluid, you know, retention and loss through sweating. So uh, Dr. Frakes and our nutrition office is, is, is part of a pilot study with the NFL. So, you know, our sports science, our medical team, uh, our strength and conditioning team all working together to kind of put together with me the best and safest way to get your football team ready for your opener. And so this year it was three on, one off, three on, one off, two on, one off. And after those eight days, we then went six straight. And we felt like after those eight days with three recovery days, we were able through those six straight days to really um, come out of those six straight days in a great fashion. And our guys were able to handle the back-to-back -back days really well, and we feel really good about where we are. So it, it really was um, a collaborative effort with sports science, um, you know, the medical team, uh, strength and conditioning, utilizing data from the NFL to kind of put this together. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, for the defensive background, I know a lot of them, a lot of those guys are young, but there's a lot of depth at that position. How do you feel about their consistency from the beginning of fall camp till now? I think I commented on this before. I think what, what I like the most is um, we're playing the ball well down the field. Um, you know, there are deflected balls. There, there's balls that we're competing for. And, and we, just, we simply don't have those um, – what the heck, you know, like what happened out here? Why, why is somebody, you know, wide open down the field? We're not having blown coverages. You know, there's uh, certainly a, a much more consistent uh, approach to what we're doing on the back end of our defense. And, and like you said, part of that is there's some more maturity back there, some more veteran uh, play. Um, and, and I think coupled with the fact that you know, we're getting uh, consistency out there. I see it, and I know 
uh, Blake and Corey and, and Jake see a much more consistent unit uh, on the back end. Brian, I was just wondering what you've seen in that USC defense since the coaching change. I know their spring game was... Yeah, it's hard to tell because there's so many transfers. You know, you, you, you really look, we look at a lot of U, UCLA tape to get structure, right, in terms of understanding the structure of the defense. And then, you know, because, because there's so many transfers, it's, it's really hard. We, you know, we, we break them down individually by player and do a deep dive on each one of them as players. And, you know, obviously a lot of individually talented players. But like anything else, they got to play together as a unit. So what we've done is we've relied heavily on the unit that played together at UCLA and expect that they're going to play in a similar fashion. Um, and, then, and then obviously know the talents that, you know, a lot of these guys bring uh, as individuals. And is there somebody on your team that we're not talking about that you wanted to, to shine on? Um, I don't know that there's any one particular guy. I think I've said this, you know, many times, and you guys have heard me. You know, I think that, you know, the sum of this team will be greater than any one of its parts. I think it's going to be a unit that um, a lot of guys are going to be uh, integral in, it, in its success. I mean, we're going to play five or six defensive tackles. We're going to play, you know, five defensive ends. We're going to play four or five linebackers. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to be part of this. So, um, look, we all can pull out the, the Harold Perkinses and, you know, the Will Campbells and the Garrett Nussmeyers and, you know, Karen Lacey's. But I think there's more players that are going to enter into the mix than, than, than we had last year. Hey, Coach, over here. So, I know you just talked about some of those leaders, right, like Will, like Emery, Harold, Mason, they played as – and contributed as freshmen. What have you really seen from them from a leadership standpoint going into year three? And speaking of accountability from a second question, uh, what's the status on the number 18 jersey and when y'all are thinking about maybe releasing that? You know, leadership is an interesting question that I'm asked. Um, you know, each player has in, in their own makeup um, a way that um, they handle leadership. What I require from our players is you know, personal accountability and, and hold others accountable. Um, it's not a position that, you know, and, and, I, and I remind our, our leadership group of this, it's, it's not a position that, um, you know, you get a chance to explain yourself um, when, when you have to do things. It's not a position that um, you want if you expect popularity. It's it's a position that you know has to hold good friends accountable for things that they haven't been doing. So I think each one of them does it in their own fashion in terms of who they are. So leadership is is happening quite well within this program, but different for who the individual player is. As it relates to eighteen, um, you know I think I think I've pretty much made a decision on on how that number is going to end up. Um, and, and I think you'll probably hear something here, you know, very, very soon, if not um, tomorrow within the next, you know, 48 hours. Coach over here. Brian, you made a, a wholesale change with five new defensive coaches, uh, a total different philosophy with uh, aggressive versus last year. Can you talk about uh, how you see the defense right now and, and what you expect to do with them to do better on defense this year? Well, I think if you ask me what my philosophy is defensively, it's it's to keep the points down first and foremost, right? I mean, it's – I think, you know, when you talk about the elements of defense, it starts with, um, you know, the players having an energy and an enthusiasm um, for the the coaches in which they're playing for. Um, there, there's there's got to be um, a sense of excitement, um, energy, and, you know, I, I thought at times, you know, we lack that, you know, and, and we're seeing that on a consistent basis. That's the price of just playing defense, right? That, that's, that's what you have to see just to play 
you know, uh, the kind of defense that will help you win games. Now, from there, schematically, you know, I think what I've always felt from an offensive perspective, that if you don't know where guys are lined up every down, that's a good place to start. Um, the ability to pressure on the perimeter, the ability to mix coverages so the quarterback doesn't know what he's getting every play, that, that is also an important piece of playing really good defense. But the core of this is getting off the field. And we had a hard time getting off the field last year. And I think Blake um, has done a really good job with the defenses that he's coached, in particular at Missouri, um, of, of having ways to get off the field, in particular on third down. So I think we start with the core of having a defense that's excited about playing for their coach. I think we have a defense that um, can play three down, four down, can mix things up in the back end of the defense, and then um, you know get really creative in third down situations. And at the end of the day, keep the points down. Hey, Coach. Um, just quick questions on uh, Sage Ryan and Weeks West. How are, how are they doing? Pretty good. I mean, I, I think we've got a grade one hamstring. Uh, I think we've got a foot sprain. You know, these are injuries that should clear up this week and, and have them back full go for preparation for um, USC. I think we've got an ankle with Miles Frazier. Uh, let's see who else we have. I think those were the three. Hilton. Hilton's got a, a, a bone bruise. Um, but one that, you know, we feel like, you know, he should be back this weekend as well. So I think three or four guys that, you know, kind of the bumps and bruises of camp, but we feel good about their availability come this weekend. Okay. Um, and, and with Paris Shand, he's, he's a guy who hasn't played a lot of football in general, but isn't, I wouldn't say he's raw as a, as a defensive end either. So how do you think he's been able to sort of um, develop so quickly and, and become um, just a pretty solid player? Well, you know, I got a chance to see him, you know, being with the defensive line quite a bit at the end of the year last year. You know, his technique, you know, at the end of the year was as good as we had on the defensive line. He is um, very conscientious. Um, he's physically capable of playing that position. He has the ability to play that position. And uh, I think what he's done in the offseason is he's gotten stronger, um, more agile, and he'll impact our defense. He's a, he's a good football player, uh, very reliable. He's going to do his job, and he's going to be where he needs to be. And um, surprisingly, um, you know, has better athletic ability than people give him credit for. Hey, Coach, from your point of view, how has Perkins adjusted to moving back inside? We're having a hard time blocking him. And we've got a pretty good offensive line. Um, I think the, the best thing that I could say about a player, um, regardless of the position in which they play, is that he has elevated the players around him. I couldn't say that about Harold this first two years. He did not elevate the players around him. His play was elevated, right? At times it was outstanding. He is now entering into that category of elevating the players around him. Um, that's a pretty good thing for Tiger fans. Coach, how close are you to sort of determining um, if you have a backup quarterback? How, how close is that competition, and have you gotten any clarity on who that might be? I think, I think we're making some progress there. I thought we kind of got into a lull uh, last week where um, – you know, I, I, I felt like it was, you know, pretty, you know, inconsistent. Um, I, I think we're, we're, we're starting to – maybe it's the sense of urgency that we're getting closer to the season. Look, the, the, the backup quarterback, let, let me just say this about that position. You know, when you know that, that you're playing for the number two, um, you have to do a great job mentally, first of all. To, to kind of settle yourself, because everybody wants to be the starter. 
you know, and, and I think that there was a little bit of a mental struggle in terms of getting in the right place and the mindset of, hey, I'm the number two. How, how do I handle myself? And I think a little bit of that was going on last week. I've seen um, improved play this week um, from, you know, both of those guys and, you know, Colin Hurley as well. I think Colin kind of came in thinking, well, I'm the number three. And, and now he's like, you know what, I, why can't I throw my hat in the ring here too? So this week has been very competitive with, um, with Ricky, AJ, and Colin. And, and I kind of feel a lot better than I did at this time when the question was asked about the number two. Um, we're not there yet, but we're making some progress. And, and I'm happy to report that we're seeing the kind of signs that we need from the three of those guys. Coach, when it comes to Nussmeyer, can you talk about his decision making over the years, uh, the turnovers, and how has he improved on that? And, you know, just coming off a year in which you threw, I think, what, four or five interceptions the entire year, you know, how do you approach it this year with the way he kind of plays and his style? Like, he wasn't the starter. So, I mean, his interceptions were, you know, you know, mop up duty, you know, trying to get on the field, trying to make a play. He was in a whole different, it wasn't his car, as I said. I mean, he, you know, he was driving that thing fast and he, he didn't care if he dented it. It's his car now. And, and, and he's, he's really careful that he doesn't, you know, mess it up. And so there's a different mindset, kind of like what I was talking about, the number two versus the number one. He is really, really conscious of that. And he understands that he can't put the ball um, in the other team's hands. Um, so I just think it's, you know, being a starter, understanding how important it is, um, and, and recognizing that uh, taking care of the football is, is absolutely crucial to our success. Hey, Brian. Over here. Uh, Mike Gundy said the other day, he told his players, don't have your agents call me for more money. We're locked in. It's time for football, anything like that. How has that been with your team in terms of dealing with hey, getting portals closed? It's time for football. Will anything else extraneous? You'll deal with that in the, in the off season. How, how, how much have they bought in and how much have you had to have those talks? Yeah, Scott, that, that hasn't really been a, a major concern. I mean, in the off season, you're going to have to deal with, you know, issues relative to NIL and, and things of that nature. But, you know, we've got, you know, a GM for that. You know, we've got um, a, a front office, if you will, for those kinds of conversations. And, and there's a time and place for that. It's, it's like, you know, in the NFL, players don't want to have contract negotiations during the season. The players don't either. They want to be focused on going to school, and they want to be focused on playing football. So it's, it's not really something that, you know, gets in the way of what they want to do right now. They don't want to be distracted by it either. Um, so uh, it really hasn't been anything that, that has been an issue or a distraction. Um, these guys are focused on going to school and, and playing football for LSU. And there'll be a time and place for that. And, and we recognize that. And when it's, when it's time uh, for those discussions, um, you know, we've, we've got a, um, a system set up to, to handle those, those talks and, and um, we'll be prepared. Good? All right, thank you.